Good morning everyone, this is Panikumar, Senior Lecturer in Chemistry, Narayana Group of Institutions. Today I would like to discuss about chemical bonding. What does it mean by a chemical bond? Where it exists? What is the importance? How many kinds of chemical bonds are there? Like that, we are going to have an extensive study about uh, the chemical bonding. So before getting into the topic, let us uh, have a look on few words uh, what we will get in the concept. First of all, let us discuss about the atom. What does it mean by atom? Atom means the species which is having no independent existence and combines either with the same or different atoms of the elements to get stability. Right? Here, regarding atom, we have to remember two different words. Number one, it has no independent existence. That means it cannot exist itself independently. Okay? It cannot exist independently. No existence. It is having no existence. Second one, the atoms will combine one with another. The atoms will combine one with another either with the same or different atoms of the elements to form the molecule. By the formation of molecule, the atoms are attain stability. So, when either two or more than two atoms of the same or different elements combine one with another, they will form a molecule. So, molecule means nothing but the species which has independent existence in nature is simply called as a, a molecule. So, what happens in order to get stability, the atoms will combine one with another to form the molecule. Right? During the formation of molecule, what happens? Let me say, I am having atom A and atom B. Two different atoms are there. These two different atoms are joined together to form the molecule. When these two atoms are joined together, we will get molecule so that the atom A will get stability and the atom B will get stability. Simply, let us take a generalization. What happens during the construction of a house? Different bricks are lying one on another and in order to join the bricks, simply cement is placed in between them. Here, cement is used as an adhesive to hold either two or more than two bricks one with another in order to construct the house. Just like that, can we place cement in between two atoms A and B? We cannot place, we cannot hold the atoms. But what happens? Some invisible forces acts in between the atoms to help them firmly or to help them one with another. Those cementing substance are the forces of attraction which holds either two or more than two atoms together is simply called as a chemical bonding. What does it mean by a chemical bond? The cementing force acting between the atoms to hold them together to form the molecule is simply called as a chemical bonding. How many types of chemical bonds are there? Here simply we can say we are having a four types of major chemical bonds. Number one, we can say ionic bond. First kind of the chemical bond is a ionic bond. Second kind of the chemical bond is a covalent bond. Third kind of the chemical bond is a metallic bond. And fourth kind of the chemical bond is a coordinator covalent bond. Fourth kind of the chemical bond is a coordinator covalent bond. Along with these four kinds of the chemical bondings, we are having the hydrogen bonding and the van der Waals force of attractions, London dispersion forces. Like that, we are having the several kinds of the chemical bondings. But in this chapter, we are going to know mainly about ionic bond, covalent bond, coordinate covalent bond and the fifth one is hydrogen bonding. We are going to discuss about these five different types of the chemical bonds. Before getting into the topic, let's have an idea and let us define these different kinds of the chemical bonds individually. What does it mean by ionic bond? As the name indicates, ionic bond is known to exist in between 
ions. Simply ionic bond is known to exist in between ions. Simply if I want to define the ionic bond, the electrostatic forces of attraction present between two oppositely charged ions is simply called as a okay, ionic bond. What does it mean by ionic bond? The electrostatic forces of attraction existing in between two oppositely charged ions. Let us take an example NaCl over here. Here NaCl molecule ionic bond is present in between Na plus ion cation and Cl minus ion anion. So here Na plus sodium is having a positive charge. Chlorine is having a negative charge. In between the positive charge and the negative charge because of the opposite charges few forces of attractions arises. Those forces of attractions arise in between two oppositely charged ions is simply called as a anionic bond. Here anionic bond is known to exist in between an electropositive element and the electronegative element. This is the most important point you have to remember. Ionic bond is known to exist in between an electropositive element and the electronegative element. Point number one regarding the the ionic bond you have to remember the ionic bond is known to exist in between an electropositive element and the electronegative element and another important point you have to remember which elements in the periodic table will join or will consist of this ionic bond means if at all a chemical bond is formed in between one a group element or two a group elements either the 1A group element or 2A group elements uh, combines with the uh, 7A group elements. If 1A or 2A group elements combines with the uh, 7A group elements, uh, then uh, the nature of bond existing in between these two groups elements, uh, either in between 1A and 7A and 2A and uh, 7A group elements, uh, ionic bond is known to exist. Right? These 1A and 2A group elements are electropositive in nature and uh, the 7A group element is uh, electronegative in nature. So, in between an electropositive element and an uh, electronegative element uh, must and should they are having uh, an ionic bond. What does it mean by electropositive character? Electropositive character means uh, the tendency of an element uh, to form a cation or else uh, to get a positive charge is called as an electropositive element. Let us take a sodium. Here, what happens? In order to get stability, sodium loses an electron and forms a Na plus ion. We know the sodium atomic number is 11. Here, 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s1. This is the electronic configuration of sodium. If sodium loses the one electron which is present in the valency shell, then it will get eight electrons in its valency shell. Right? And before losing the electron, it is having one electron in its valency shell. If it loses one electron and forms a cation, then the valency shell will become the second shell. 2s to 2p6 will become the second shell and that will become the valency shell thereby by having 8 electrons in its uh, valency shell, it will get the stability. So, such a kind of elements which are having the ability to lose the electron and getting converted into cation to get the octet configuration in their valency shell are simply called as a electropositive elements. Let me take a chlorine. We know that chlorine belongs to 7A group. That means its valency shell electronic configuration is a NH2 NP5. Here in its valency shell, how many electrons are there? 7 electrons. As I discussed in the case of sodium, what I told every element tries to attain 8 electrons in its valency shell to get a stability. Here, sodium is having 1 electron excess to get the octet configuration. So, it lost the electron. But here, Chlorine is having 7 electrons in its valency shell. In order to get the stability, what happens simply? That will take an electron from the sodium. When this chlorine takes an electron from the sodium, that will be converted into chloride ion. 
that as it takes one electron, its valency shell electronic configuration will become ns2 and p6. It got eight electrons in its valency shell, thereby it attains stability. So these are the preliminary points you have to remember regarding the ionic bond. Next, what does it mean by a covalent bond? Covalent bond is nothing but the mutual, the chemical bond which is formed, or else uh, the force of attractions uh, present between atoms, uh, which are formed by the mutual sharing of an electron pair. Here, just like that, here we can uh, provide one example H2 or Cl2 or F2, like this. Here, what happens? This hydrogen electronic configuration is 1s1 and fluorine electronic configuration is Ns2 and P5. Just like that, fluorine is also having Ns2 and P5 electronic configuration in its valence shell. Here, what happens means we will discuss about the, uh, the hydrogen uh, while we discuss about the, the covalent bond in detail. What happens uh, in the case of chlorine? Chlorine is having uh, 7 electrons in its valence shell. Let me represent uh, each electron using a dot. So here it is having 7 electrons. So I just place uh, 7 dots around uh, the chlorine. Just like that. Let me take the second chlorine atom. 7 dots are placed around the chlorine. Here this chlorine is having deficiency of 1 electron and this chlorine is having deficiency of 1 electron. So what happens? This uh, one odd electron which is present separately is mutually shared. So by sharing these two electrons what happens? Uh, these two electrons belong to both the atoms. Uh, these two electrons uh, belongs to both the atoms. Then it will get 8 electrons in this valence shell. It will get 8 electrons in the valence shell. Thereby it attains uh, stability. Right. Why the atoms having 8 electrons uh, in the valence shell uh, or having stability? That we are going to discuss in a few minutes. Right. Just like that. Here the bond which is formed by the mutual sharing of an electron pair simply the bond which is formed by the mutual sharing of an electron pair is simply called as a covalent bond. And uh, for the formation of a chemical bond, we need uh, two electrons. Here, the two electrons required for the formation of a covalent bond are contributed one each by the elements. This chlorine will contribute one electron, this chlorine will contribute one electron, and these two electrons are mutually shared by both the atoms. Such a kind of bond which is formed by mutual sharing of an electron pair is simply called as a covalent bond. And we have to remember that here I told the, the ionic bond is known to exist in between two electropositive elements and the electropositive and the electronegative element. Here the covalent bond is known to exist in between two different uh, electronegative elements uh, exception for the hydrogen. Right. In the same way, metallic bond. This is uh, mostly known uh, in the case of alloys. Here what happens? As the metals are having some excess electrons, uh, what they will do? Simply if I want to define a metal, metal is nothing but the element which is having the tendency to lose the electron easily is called as uh, a metal. So when uh, a number of metal atoms are taken together or when they bought together, simply the excess of electrons are donated by the metal atoms. Like this, I have taken uh, these uh, four different metals. Whatever the excess of electrons are uh, having by these metal atoms are donated into its uh, surroundings. All these uh, electrons will join together to form a electron cloud. So the chemical bond is formed by the electron cloud is simply called as a metallic bond and this is known to exist in between uh, different different metal atoms and the best example for the existence of this metallic bond is uh, nothing but we can find in the alloys. In the case of alloys, uh, we can find the metallic bond and coordinate covalent bond. Just like that, covalent bond is formed by sharing of an electron pair. Here what happened in the case of covalent bond, the two electrons required for the formation of the covalent bond are contributed one each by the elements. 
if the two electrons required for the formation of covalent bond are contributed by only one atom, then that is called as coordinate covalent bond. Coordinate covalent bond is nothing but here the two electrons which are required for the formation of the covalent bond are contributed by only one atom. That is called as a coordinate covalent bond. The best example for that, let us take a water molecule. Water molecule is having a alone, two lone pairs of electrons. Here I am having a H plus ion. Here H plus ion is having no electrons. So as it is ion, it is having a somewhat less stability. If it is having to have stability means it should have two electrons in its valence region. So what happens? The two electrons required for the formation of the bond are donated by the oxygen atom of the water molecule. So that H2O molecule will be converted into H3O plus. So in hydronium ion, the forces of attraction are the covalent bond formed between the oxygen atom of the water molecule and a proton. The two electrons required are contributed by only oxygen atom. Here H plus ion is having no electrons, so it cannot contribute. But uh, a covalent bond is formed. So such a kind of covalent bond which is formed by mutual sharing of an electron pair is called as a coordinate covalent bond. And uh, regarding hydrogen bonding, we will discuss in detail at the end of this chapter. Or else, uh, if you want to know now itself, simply hydrogen bonding means uh, the electrostatic forces of attractions which are present in between a highly electronegative element like uh, fluorine, oxygen, and uh, nitrogen. The electrostatic force of attractions present in between and highly electronegative element. Fluorine, oxygen and nitrogen and hydrogen attached to these elements. They should have a hydrogen which is attached to either with the fluorine, oxygen or nitrogen. So here highly electronic elements are having partial negative charges and the hydrogen attached to the highly electronic element is having partial positive charge. So because of the opposite charges what happens sir, there will be electrostatic forces of attraction sir. Such a kind of electrostatic forces of attractions existing in between highly electronegative atom and hydrogen are known as hydrogen bonding. So chemical bonding means the forces of attraction which held, which hold either two or more than two atoms together is simply called as a chemical bond. Here, during the formation of chemical bond, what happens? We know that a chemical bond is known to exist in between two different atoms. Let me take atom A and let me take atom B. We know that every atom is having nucleus at its center and in the extra nuclear part, we are having negatively charged electrons are present in the extra nuclear part. So what happens? The nucleus of one atom attracts the electrons of another atom or neighboring atoms. In the same way, this nucleus also attracts the electrons of its neighboring atom. So because of the Attractive forces between nucleus and the electrons present in the extra nuclear part of the neighboring atom, these two atoms uh, moves uh, comes close to one another. Up to what distance they will approach each other means uh, nothing but till the distance or, or the ideal distance at which uh, the repulsive forces operates in between the nuclei of both the atoms and electrons of both the atoms. So, the atoms will come close to one another until the repulsive forces among the nucleus and the electrons and the attractive forces between the nucleus and the electrons. So, the chemical bond is simply known to exist at such a place where the attractive forces are equal to the repulsive forces. 
so a chemical bond what happens the magnitude of the attractive forces is equal to the magnitude of the repulsive forces the atoms cannot approach much more than that distance if the atoms comes close than that distance what happens the repulsive forces uh, dominates the attractive forces uh, and the atoms will be separated from one another so this is the condition of the formation of a chemical bond as we discussed earlier there are different kinds of the chemical bonds we are going to discuss about the, the covalent bond here the first systematic theory about the formation of a chemical bond is simply given by the coser and lewis so coser and lewis proposed the first theory regarding the formation of these molecules from the atoms this coser lewis theory is also known as a electrovalent theory coser lewis theory is also known as a electrovalent theory coser lewis theory is also known as electrovalent theory and this coser lewis theory is based on the bohr's atomic model coser lewis theory is based on the bohr's atomic model based on the bohr's atomic model the formation of the molecules is Uh, explained by the coser uh, and lewis uh, based on the bohr's atomic model this coser explained the formation of the ionic bond and uh, lewis explained the formation of the covalent bond the formation of the covalent bond is explained by the lewis lewis theory Lewis formulated either duplet or octet rule to explain the formation and the stability of the covalent molecule. What he did? Lewis explained or he formulated either duplet or octet rule. Duplet rule or a octet rule to explain the formation and the stability of the covalent molecules. Lewis theory majorly based on the stability of the molecule so what does it mean by duplet rule and what does it mean by octet rule nothing but duplet means the phenomenon of the molecules having ns2 electronic configuration in their valence shell the phenomenon of the molecules having ns2 electronic configuration in their valence shell is simply called as a duplet rule and the phenomenon of the molecules having ns2 np6 electronic configuration in their valence shell is called as octet rule duplet rule means two octet rule means having eight electrons in their valence shell is called as octet rule so what happens during the formation of a covalent molecule during the formation of a covalent molecule every atom tries to attain either two electrons or eight electrons in their valence shell to attain the stability just like the inert gases we know that all the inert gases are stable in nature why they are having stability nothing but because they are having completely filled the valence shell in the same way every atom or every element tries to attain the eight electrons that means uh, completely fill the valence shell uh, by that they will try to attain the stability but here for the octet rule we are having some exceptions what are the exceptions to the octet rule what are exceptions to the octet rule means uh, nothing but here after the formation of a molecule few of the atoms uh, may have less than uh, eight electrons in their valence shell so what happens first number one, number one exception is uh, incomplete octet some of the molecules might have incomplete octet few of the molecules may have incomplete octet 
what does it mean by incomplete octet octet means having eight electrons incomplete octet means they are having less than eight electrons in their valence shell in incomplete octet what happens means the central atom is having less than eight electrons after the formation of a molecule after the formation of a molecule if the central atom is having less than eight electrons that is called as a incomplete generally these incomplete octet molecules are shown by the 2a group elements and uh, third a group elements 2a group elements and the third a group elements uh, will show the incomplete octet molecules examples uh, becl2 we can say becl2 bcl3 and uh, alcl3 these three are uh, the familiar examples for incomplete octet molecules so here in becl2 molecule what happens uh, b this side wants here this side another here so here one bond here one bond totally it is having two covalent bonds so this is having only four electrons in its uh, valence shell and in bcl3 what happens uh, it is having only three covalent bonds that means uh, it is also having uh, six electrons that means uh, less than eight electrons such that the phenomenon of the molecules having less than eight electrons in its uh, valence shell is called as uh, incomplete octet configuration second one is few of the molecules may have more than eight electrons that is called as expanded octet configuration so the second exception is uh, expanded octet configuration so expansion that means uh, the phenomenon of the molecules uh, in which uh, the central atom is having greater than eight electrons uh, in its uh, valence shell is called as expanded octet configuration for that we can take pcl5 here the phosphorus is bonded to five chlorine atoms five to uh, ten electrons in the same way sf6 in the same way um, if7 so here phosphorus is the central atom having five chlorine so it is having 10 electrons around it here six chlorines are there to the sulfur so 12 electrons are here here seven chlorine atoms are there so iron is having 14 electrons like that the phenomenon of the molecules in which the central atom is having more than eight electrons is called as expanded octet configuration next in the same way third exception for the octet is nothing but odd electron molecules so here what happens the central atom is not having eight electrons the valency shell electron number in the central atom is uh, not equal to 8 and uh, they are having an uh, odd number of electrons that means uh, that is having an unpaired electron that is having an unpaired electron in its uh, valence shell and the fourth exception is uh, cations few of the transition metal cations uh, are also not having a octet configuration example will be ferrous ion and ferric ion and nickel na plus 2 and q plus ion cu plus 2 so fe plus 3 and fe plus 2 and q plus ion these are also not having eight electrons in its valence shell so these are the exceptions to the octet rule did you understand so let us see few examples for the lewis structures here in lewis structures let us take the fluorine molecule what will be the lewis structure for the fluorine molecule so we know that fluorine belongs to 7a group what is the electronic configuration of the fluorine 1s2, 2s2 and 2p5. So in orbital diagram method, the valence shell electronic configuration will be like this. What happens uh, here you are having two electrons in 2s orbital, 
five electrons in the 2p orbital. So this will be the electronic distribution for the fluorine. Here, each electron in the valency shell of the fluorine atom is represented as a dot. So as a, this fluorine is having seven electrons in its valency shell, as it is having seven electrons in its valency shell, what happens? Seven dots I have to place over the fluorine atom. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So these seven electrons belongs to this fluorine. In fluorine molecule, we know that we are having another fluorine just like that. Let us write the seven dots over the fluorine atom. So this fluorine is having one electron less than the octet configuration. It is having only seven electrons. This fluorine is also having one electron less than the octet configuration. So in order to get the octet configuration, what happens? This fluorine atom captures the electron of the adjacent molecule and this fluorine atom also takes the electron of the adjacent molecule. So here the two electrons which are present at the intersecting point at the intersecting place what happens these two electrons belongs to this fluorine as well as to this fluorine. So here six electrons as these two are belonging to this fluorine eight will become the valence shell number of electrons here it also gets eight electrons. So the fluorine becomes a stable. So the phenomenon of the molecules here what happened actually this electron belongs to this fluorine and this electron belongs to this fluorine but these two fluorine atoms in order to attain stability mutually they share the unpaired electron so that they try to attain the stability. So simply we can write the fluorine molecule like this. So these two shared pair of electrons are represented as CA line which implies a covalent bond between two fluorine atoms. Here each fluorine is having a six electrons thereby it attains the octet configuration. In the same way let us take oxygen molecule. We know that oxygen belongs to which group? 6K group. Its valence shell electronic configuration will be NH2 NP4. It is having how many electrons in its valence shell? It is having 6 electrons. So let me represent those 6 electrons uh, like this. This oxygen is also having 6 electrons uh, in its valence shell. It is represented like this. So in order to get stability what happens? It is deficient of 2 electrons as well as this oxygen is also having deficiency of 2 electrons. So simply these 2 electrons are mutually shared by both the oxygen atoms. Thereby a double bond is formed in between 2 oxygen atoms. So the electrons that are involved in the bond formation belongs to both the atoms. Thereby, here four electrons which are non-bonding, here two bonds, that means four electrons which are bonding. So four plus four, it attains an octet configuration, that means it gets eight electrons and this also gets a eight electrons. So the oxygen molecule will become stable. In the same way, let us observe the formation of a nitrogen molecule. So we know that nitrogen belongs to 50A group. Nitrogen belongs to 50A group. What is the electronic configuration of the general electronic configuration of 50A group? NH2, NP3. So here the nitrogen atom, 5 electrons are represented like this. So in order to get the stability, how many electrons it requires? 3 electrons more. So the three electrons which are present on the adjacent nitrogen atom are mutually shared by both the nitrogen atoms. Thereby what happens? It attains a octet configuration. Thereby the nitrogen atom also attains a stability. This is what about the Lewis structures. Did you understand guys? So like this what happens? The molecules shares the electron pairs and attains stability. 
next we will discuss about the how to write the lewis dot structures okay how to write the lewis dot structures so there is a systematic procedure to write the lewis dot structures so let us explain or let us have a look on the process of writing the lewis dot structure for the nitric ion so here you are having the systematic process i will explain you clearly here i would like to write the lewis dot structure for the nitrate ion so before writing the lewis dot structure what we have to do means uh, you have to calculate the total number of valency electrons present in all the atoms of the molecule so here what happens we are having one nitrogen and the three oxygen atoms are there so in all the atoms we have to count the total number of valency electrons present in this molecule that is the first step so one nitrogen is there nitrogen belongs to which group 50a group so it is having five valency electrons so b is equal to 5 plus and uh, three oxygen atoms we know oxygen belongs to which group 60a group so 6 into three atoms uh, here minus one charge is there for anion the total number of valency electrons is equal to the number of electrons present in the valency shell of all the atoms involved in that molecule plus uh, magnitude of the charge if negative charge is there plus magnitude of the charge if cation is given minus magnitude of the charge so 5 into 5 plus 6 into 3 as you are having minus 1 so you just use plus 1 more here so 18 plus 1 19 plus 5 24 valency electrons should be distributed equally to the all the atoms involved in that molecule formation next we have to decide the central atom how we have to decide the central atom means uh, we can have three different rules uh, one is less electronegative atom is present in that molecule and second one is element with the more number of bonds and third one is a uh, larger atom any one of this parameter is taken to decide the central atom so here in the nitrate ion we know that nitrogen is less electronegative and it is bonded to three other oxygen atoms so the central atom will be the nitrogen atom the central atom will be the nitrogen atom and after deciding the nitrogen atom you just write the surrounding atoms remaining atoms at equal distances surrounding the nitrogen atom so what happens here one oxygen atom here one oxygen atom here one oxygen atom so the nitrogen will become the central atom and the oxygen atoms belongs the belonging to the surrounding atoms so central atom is represented by ca and surrounding atoms are represented by sa next what you have to do for these four atoms you have to distribute equally the 24 electrons after writing the central atom and surrounding atoms first join the central atom and the surrounding atom using a sigma bond or using a, a line so that means two electrons are shared in between this nitrogen and oxygen two electrons are shared in between this nitrogen and oxygen two electrons are shared in between this nitrogen and oxygen so like this uh, here i just distributed uh, six electrons so minus six how many electrons i am having more uh, 18 electrons are there how many electrons are there 18 electrons total 24 electrons are there out of that six electrons are distributed between the atoms so you are having 18 more electrons the remaining electrons uh, should be supplied or distributed as known pairs uh, and uh, first to the surrounding atoms first you have to distribute the excess number of electrons to the surrounding atoms uh, and then to the central atom in such a way to get the octet configuration so what happens uh, this oxygen is having only two electrons over here in order to get uh, stability how many electrons it requires more uh, as per octet rule it requires uh, six more electrons so distribute uh, six electrons so here two plus uh, 
three lone pairs totally six electrons it got an octet configuration in the same way six electrons to this oxygen atom this also got the octet configuration this also have the octet uh, configuration so what happened uh, why you distribute the electrons like this uh, simply the surrounding atoms attains the stability but uh, what about the central atom central atom is having only six electrons it did not receive the any octet configuration so what happens any one of the surrounding atom the lone pair of electrons are converted into pi bonds in order to get the octet configuration what happens we have to convert the lone pair of electrons into the pi bonds then uh, the central atom also attains the stability how to find the number of pi bonds present in a molecule so here the number of pi bonds is represented by p the number of pi bonds is calculated by the formula 6n plus 2 minus v here n means uh, total number of atoms involved in the formation of that molecule so here you are having four atoms one nitrogen and three oxygen atoms so 6 into 4 plus 2 minus how many valency electrons are there 24 so 24 plus 2 26 minus 24 that's equal to 2 electrons so 2 electrons means 1 pi bond so this nitrate ion is having 1 pi bond this nitrate ion is having 1 pi bond so we can write its structure like this nitrogen double bonded oxygen 1 pi bond is there oxygen oxygen as one lone pair is converted into a pi bond it is having only two lone pairs and here you are having three lone pair of electrons now you can check this oxygen atom is having a four electrons as lone pairs four electrons in the bond pairs octet configuration is satisfied nitrogen four bonds octet configuration is satisfied here six plus two octet configuration is satisfied here it is also octet configuration is satisfied but uh, what about this negative charge present here so that charge left over the atoms after the formation of a molecule is simply called as a formal charge that is represented by qf so formal charge is calculated by the formula number of valency electrons minus number of lone pair electrons minus half into number of bond pair electrons so let us calculate the formal charge of uh, all of these atoms so let me designate the nitrogen as a this oxygen as b this oxygen as c this oxygen as d so here formal charge of uh, a atom that means after the formation of nitrate ion or after the formation of nitrate what will be the charge present on the nitrogen so here i told NBE number of valency electrons present in the nitrogen we know that nitrogen belongs to which a group fifth so five minus number of lone pair electrons this nitrogen does not consist any lone pair so five minus zero minus half into number of bond pair electrons here one sigma bond and one pi bond that means two bonds here this is the third this is the fourth bond so four two sir eight so you will get a plus one charge over here so after the formation of nitrate ion the nitrogen atom carries a unique positive charge and next q a formal charge on the b this oxygen atom we know that oxygen belongs to 60a group so number of valency electrons is equal to six minus number of lone pair electrons it is having how many lone pair electrons four lone pair electrons six minus four minus half into next what happened it is having a two bonds so four two so that's equal to zero so the charge on this oxygen atom after the formation of nitrate ion is equal to zero next c and d oxygen atoms are 
in the similar environment both the same so formal charge on a c atom or a d atom both will be same oxygen belongs to 6a group so 6 minus number of lone pair electrons here 1 2 3 4 5 6 here also 6 6 minus 6 minus half into there is only one bond so two electrons so minus one so this uh, oxygen atoms will carry a unique negative charge this is what about the formal charge like this we have to write the lewis dot structures here one question might have been arisen what happened means only the pi bond might present here why it should not be here so that can be present what happens uh, simply if the pi bond shifts over here one of the lone pair of electron will be shifted to here then what happens uh, nitrogen oxygen and three lone pair of electrons over here here you will get a pi bond and this oxygen atom will carry a two lone pair of electrons and this is common in the same way it might happen like this if this lone pi bond shifts over here this lone pair of electrons may be relocated then what happens oxygen this is having three lone pair of electrons and here you are having a double bond of pi bond and here you are having a two lone pair of electrons here this is having zero charge these two are having uninegative charge like this the phenomenon of the molecules existing in more than one structure due to the electron migrations or due to the difference in the electron density is simply called as a resonance and those structures which are produced by relocating the electrons are called as a resonating structures that is called as resonating structure this is the process of writing lewis dot structures students you just try try to write the lewis dot structures for the carbonate ion in the same process what you have to do the simple process first count the all the number of valency electrons present in all the atoms next to decide the central atom less electron into the atom or the element with more number of bonds or the larger atom next write the central atom at the center and the remaining atoms surrounding it at equal distances and then join the central atom and surrounding atoms using a bond and then remaining electrons uh, distribute as the lone base to the surrounding atoms first and then to the central atom if the octet is not satisfied then what you have to do one of the lone pair is converted into pi bond the number of pi bonds in the molecule is calculated by the formula 6 n plus 2 minus v here n means total number of atoms v means total number of valency electrons and the charge left over the atoms after the formation of molecules is called as a formal charge it is calculated by the formula number of valency electrons minus number of lone pair electrons minus half into number of bond pair electrons so using these systematic rules you try to calculate or you try to write the structure of carbonate ion is it okay